guys, nahulog ako sa manhole. So, sobrang ihing-ihi ko na sa bus. Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rika Janine. I make videos about college, business, and lifestyle. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button down below. Guys, wow! Thank you for the overwhelming support. Ni pa na ka 1K views yung upcut video ko, but a lot of you have been sending me DMs and asking me questions about UP Life or UPLB to be specific. I thought of making a video na kung saan mas marami tayong pwedeng itakel at pag-usapan na hindi lang na confine sa upcut or admission process sa UP. This is the second installment of hashtag UP Life Bits, a series where I'll be sharing with you bits and pieces of my five-year UPLB experience. Pero bago natin talakayan yan, disclaimer muna guys, hindi po lahat ng UPLB students ay may pare-parehong experiences. We make our own stories. That is why I'll just be speaking on my behalf. So for today's video, we will be talking about the things I wish I knew before entering college. Or to be specific, the things I wish I knew before entering UPLB. This video will not only be beneficial for freshies, but also for the ones who are still on their youthful years in college or yung mga marami pang time. So if you want to know more about that, then just keep on watching. Before making this video, I sat down for days to collect my thoughts and with that, I was able to make a list of 10 things you should probably know before starting your journey. Kasi ito yung mga bagay na walang nakapagsabi sa akin bago ako pumasok ng UP. Just figured out when I was already in third year or when I was already ineligible to do those things. Since nahirapan akong pumili kung ano ba yung mga dapat kong i-include dito, siguro gagawa na lang ako ng part 2, 3, and so on. But for now, here are the 5 things we could tackle. Number one, the basics. Basic in the sense na marami ng YouTubers yung nakapagsabi nito or mga ate nyo, ate kuya nyo from upper batches. Let's first tackle about the dress code. We all know that UP doesn't have a dress code. Walang pakialamanan sa UP, bahala ka kung ano gusto mong isuot. How I wish I knew that even though UP didn't have a dress code, I should have not worn my chinelas or pambahay clothes to class. Lahat naman yata tayo naisip na, uy, ang galing, pwedeng pumasok ng nakapambahay or nakachinelas sa college, lalo na sa UP. Well, I have nothing against those people who do. Hindi naman lahat ng tao sa UP ay privileged to have a lot of clothes or maybe they went studying all night. It's just that whenever I come to class unprepared, I feel so unconfident and I tend to just slack off for the rest of the period. There could be times na bigla ka nalang tatawagin ng professor mo or makita mo yung mga orgmates mo or yung crush mo or kung sino mang gusto mong makapansin sa'yo. Based from my past academic performance, mas nakapag-participate ako in class at mas mataas ang exam scores ko kapag maayos yung damit ko, pag naka OOTD ako or naka makeup ako kasi feeling ko mas confident ako to fight the day. And halos lahat ng classmates ko nag-prepare, even my professor prepared to present himself well tapos ako nakapambahay. But if you have class presentations, group reports, case studies, or anything na magsasalita kayo in class, make sure to dress well. Pag sinabing corporate attire, research mo what a corporate attire means. Pag sinabing business casual, dapat alam mo yung differences nun. Halos lahat naman ang ginagawa natin sa college is training ground para sa real world. Some professors also require their students to wear closed shoes, pants, and shirt. Lalo na pag nasa laboratory, farm, field, or production site. And sa chem lab, nire-require din magsuot ng lab gown. So, if may lab gown kayo ng high school, itabi nyo yon kasi for sure, magagamit nyo pa rin siya. Another thing is hindi kami nagsusuot ng ID. Alata kasing freshie kapag naka-ID ka. Although kapag exams and kapag nasa library ka, kailangan lagi kang may dalang ID. For me, I feel like mas nawawala ko yung ID kapag naka-lanyard siya kaysa pag nasa wallet ko lang. Siyempre, kapag sasakay kayo ng bus, may tendency na maiwan nyo pa yung ID nyo. So, sayang naman yung 20 pesos kapag nag-commute kayo. The next basic thing you should know is that walang block sa UP. Meron lang tuwing first semester of your first year. Pero that doesn't mean na sa lahat ng subjects, sila yung kaklase mo. May kita mo lang sila sa ibang subjects or merong GI 
guidance instruction ata yun, parang siyang homeroom. Pero that's just once a week. And yung ibang subjects mo, possible na hindi mo ka-course, hindi mo ka-batch yung maging kaklase mo. How I wish I knew na ganun pala ang setup. Pwede palang maging kaklase ko ay upper batch, hindi ko ka-course, or hindi ko kakilala talaga at all. So, nakaya naman kung chikahin mo yung katabi mo, akala mo freshman lang din siya, yun pala, upper batch, tapos respetado pala siyang tao, ganun. So, be sensitive kung sino yung maging kasama niyo sa class, kasi it's not like the same in high school na lahat ay ka-wavelength mo. Baka yung iba doon, kaklase nyo, 10 years yung tanda sa inyo. Let's talk about commuting in LB. Sa Diliman, sikat na sikat ang jeep na ikot at tohi. Sa amin sa UPLB, ang tawag naman sa jeep ay kanan at kaliwa. Huwag mong kalimutan na ang kaliwa na mga jeep could usually go to forestry. Ang daming beses ko nang naligaw sa forestry kasi sakay lang ako ng sakay. Akala ko kaliwa lang yung jeep at iikot siya ng campus. Pero hindi. Napadpad ako sa forestry. Turn out, na late pa ako sa next class ko. Edi sana nilakad ko na lang. Alapit-lapit lang naman. Nag-jeep pa ako. How I wish I knew what college po estudyante meant as soon as day one. Nung freshie ako, tuwing sasakay ako ng bus or jeep papuntang campus, ang sinasabi ko, UPLB po, estudyante. It doesn't sound cool. Halata kang bagong salta. So, kaya siya tinawag na college dahil yung buong street ng kahabaan ng UPLB ay college road. College ay lugar. So, wag mong kakalimutan yun. Sana din pala, nalaman ko agad na may designated places ang loading at unloading area sa campus. Hindi ka pwedeng pumara ng jeep kung saan-saan lang. So guys, I highly suggest that you attend the campus tour. Kasi yung mga small details na ganyan, dinidiscuss yan sa inyo nung magiging tour guide nyo. On my previous vlog, may nakapagtanong sa akin if sulit po bang magdala ng car sa UPLB. Well, ang masasabi ko lang is kung rich kid ka, <laughs> oo, sulit na sulit kapag sagot ng parents mo yung gas money mo. In my case kasi, ako na yung bahalang mag-budget ng allowance ko. And at the same time, I have other side hustle kaya may extra money ako na pang gas at pang car wash. As a fifth year student na gumagawa ng thesis, marami kasi akong binabalik-balikan ng mga offices, government agencies, university offices, doctors, and professors within a span of two hours na kailangan kong habulin. Kaya okay lang sa akin if kailangan kong gumasos for gas. Pero kung freshman ka, I suggest maglakad ka na lang muna with your blockmates. In that way, mas makapagkwentuhan pa kayo, mas makapag-explore kayo ng mga bagong kainan without thinking kung saan ka kailangan mag-park. Sana din nalaman ko na hindi pala Friday ang best day to go home to Manila. It was in my third year na natutunan ko na mas okay palang bumiyahe tuwing Sabado ng umaga. Kasi there was a time na Friday ako umuwi at inabot ako ng 6 hours sa EDSA. Guys, nahulog ako sa manhole. <laughs> sa sobrang ihing-ihi ko na sa bus. Naglakad na ako kasi halos lahat na ng tao ay naglalakad sa EDSA at hindi ko nakita na may manhole pala. So nahulog yung isang leg ko sa manhole. So, huwag nyo akong tularan. Huwag kayong bababa sa EDSA at maglakad mag-isa. Kung gusto mo ng hassle-free na travel, Saturday is the best day. Mag-akads ka na lang or magpahinga tuwing Friday. Para pag-uwi mo ng bahay, hindi na sobrang dami pang iisipin mo na, ay, kailangan kong mag-aral or something-something. Just, Spend your time wisely with your family. Now, let's talk about schoolwork. Before entering UP, I didn't have any idea of how the classes would look like. Hindi ko alam na ang lecture class pala means a room of 180 students. Yes, guys, 180 students. Especially tuwing mid-year, sobrang jam-pack talaga ng mga lecture halls. As in, walang vacant seat na mahanap. Dahil nga puro large classes ang mga lecture subjects, Mahirap talagang humabol kapag hindi mo na-gets yung sinabi ng prof. Siyempre, nakakaya nung magsabi na hindi mo gets, tapos 180 kayo dun sa large class, ba? So, you better take note of the consultation hours of your professors. Hindi naman maling humingi ng tulong, lalo na kapag kilala ka ng professor mo, mas nakita niya nag exert ka ng effort. What you can do is that present something that you did to your professor. Sumagot ka ng mga past excerpts o kaya sagutan mo ulit yung mga quizzes na ginawa ninyo and then from there, sabihin mo na, Ma'am, sir, dito po ako nahihirapan sa area na to. Tama po ba yung ginawa ko? And then kung mali, ayun, na-explain na nila kung paano yung dapat gawin. Siguro nung freshman pa lang ako, hindi ko kasi alam na ganun yung dapat na ginagawa. Kaya ang daming beses kong bumagsak sa Math 17 tuwing mga excerpts at quizzes. 
dito nadadali yung mga UP students kasi kadalasan kung kailang patapos na yung semester, sakalang pala sila nagpapakonsult. Yung iba pala, maximum absences na at hindi na dapat pumapasok sa klase kasi katumbas nun ay 5 o drop ka na. So kung first exer mo pa lang at bagsak ka na, mag-isip-isip ka na pumunta sa prof mo. Speaking about quizzes and exers, di ba high school tayo pag sinabi quiz or exer, parang pakyut lang na seat work. Diyan ako nagkamali. Math 17 nun, kakashift ko lang ng IE. I didn't know what an exer would be like. Sobrang laki pala ng grade component nun. Sorry guys, nalobat ako bigla. It's almost 2.30am and hindi pa ako tapos. So, bilisan na natin. Next on my list is the plan of study. Plan of study ang tawag sa list of subjects na nasa curriculum mo at kung kailang semester mo sila dapat itake. It helps you to avoid being delayed by taking all of the subjects na nandun. Although, it is inevitable if hindi mo matake agad lahat ng yun kasi madalas nagkakaubusan ng slots doing enlistment. Before, when I was in my earlier years, hindi ko alam na dapat pala palagi updated yung plan of study ko. Kasi it also helps kung ilang semesters pa yung matitira bago ka graduate. At the same time, it also helps during enrollment sa SAIS para may backup plan ka ng subjects mo pag naubusan ka ng slots. Speaking of SAIS, SAIS is a Student Academic Information System or ang online registration ng UPLB. Sa Diliman, ang tawag doon ay CRS. Hindi na uso ang class card, so doon na sa SAIS nakita ang grades at nag enlist ng subjects during enrollment period. Marami nang nabiktima ng SAIS. I myself had a semester na kung saan zero units yung nakuha ko. Pag freshman ka, hindi pa kasi kayo yung priority ng professors kapag pre-rog. pre ang tawag sa pagmamakaawa sa isang professor na tanggapin ka sa class niya kapag wala ng slots na available. Kaya siya pre dahil teacher's prerogative. Ibig sabihin, choice ng professor if tatanggapin ka niya or if hindi na kasi gusto niya limited lang students niya. Time na yun, na zero units yung nakuha ko, hindi ko nasunod yung nasa plan of study ko. Therefore, cost my delay kasi hindi ko na-take yung mga seasonal subjects. So, if hindi mo na-take yung seasonal subjects, kailangan mo pang mag-mid-year or mag-overload sa mga susunod na SEM. Okay, tandaan mo yun. So, dapat updated ka palagi sa plan of study mo. Pwede ka nun makapag-request sa Office of the College Secretary. Check mo din sa Google. Meron nun. Number four is doing things alone. In college, wala nang pakailamanan kung mag-isa ka lang kumakain or naglalakad. Sobrang busy ng mga tao at may kanya-kanyang schedule. Hindi na nila iniisip kung loner ka. Unlike nung high school, di ba? Parang ibubuli ka pag wala kang friends, ganyan. Sobrang busy ng mga tao at dami ng responsibilities. Mas natututo tayong maging independent and productive even in our solitude. So don't worry if you have to disappear for a while to do your thing. It's normal. Number five is exchange student programs abroad. Malamang yung iba sa inyo, high school pa lang nakapag-exchange student na. Kasi no high school kami, merong exchange student sa Germany. Hindi ako nakasali kasi hindi namin afford yun. Pero sa UP pala, may scholarships ang exchange student program. How I wish earlier na pwede palang mag-exchange student program sa mga universities abroad such as in Czech Republic, Italy, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, US, and other countries. Fourth year na ako nung nalaman kong may ganun. Isa-isa kasing nawawala yung mga classmates ko every sem. Dahil pala, nag-aaral sila abroad. Last year, 2019, I applied for an exchange student program in Michigan State University. Sadly, dalawa lang yung slots na mayroon ng MSU. So, hindi ako natanggap. And yun lang yung in-applyan kong university kasi mayroon din silang agribusiness management. So, I was planning of taking up economics, agribusiness management, and other international marketing courses sa MSU at that time. You can apply at the UP Office of International Linkages para makapag-apply ng scholarships and for proper endorsements sa universities abroad. As early as freshman, I suggest na umatan na kayo ng mga orientations ng ISEC at ng Society of Exchange Students UP para malaman nyo kung paano ba nag apply for exchange student programs. Ako kasi hindi ko nalaman yun agad. So hindi ko napaghandaan na dapat pala mataas yung grades ko or dapat pala ito yung mga tinake kong subjects. Wala. Do your best, lalo na sa mga subjects na mababait yung professors. Kasi matutulungan ka nilang gumawa ng referral letters explaining how your academic performance in, in his or her class was. So, if gusto mo talaga makapag-exchange student programs, freshman pa lang, paghandaan mo na. 
yung pocket money mo, yung passport mo, and all of the other resources na kailanganin para makapunta ka abroad. Sa pagkakaalam ko, that exchange student program could last from one semester up to one academic year. And if you're thinking na baka madali ka if mag-exchange student program ka, girl, I suggest take that opportunity kung kaya ng grades mo at kaya ng pera nyo. Kasi once in a lifetime experience lang yun, and to be able to represent University of the Philippines sa ibang bansa, that's one thing you could add up to your resume. That's it for today guys. Sana marami kayo natutunan sa first part ng ating series. And for next week, ito yung mga itatakal natin. Again, before you leave, please make sure to comment down below. You guys, masipag ako mag-reply sa comments. Sobrang mahaba kung makita nyo. Lahat talaga ng queries sinasagot ko. So, if may tanong kayo, itanong nyo na yan para matakal natin sa mga next videos. Thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one. Bye!